Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a review of my Gucci mini Mamont bag in the camera style. I do get a lot of questions about this bag, especially because of how small it is. So people ask me a lot on what I can fit in this bag and also because it is in the color white. A lot of people want to know how the wear and tear is, especially color transfer. Before we get into the video, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Isabel and I do new videos every single week about luxury bags and accessories and high low fashion styling. So if this is something that you like as well, I'd love it if you subscribe subscribe to my channel and if you do end up liking this video or if you like one of these bags please don't forget to give it a thumbs up so I've had this bag for about a year now and I do use it quite regularly so I think it's definitely a good time for me to do a thorough review on this bag towards the end of the video after I show you everything about this bag I'm also going to do a comparison like a really small mini comparison between this bag and the Soho Disco bag I feel like a lot of people choose between these two bags when they are looking for a camera style bag from Gucci so I thought I'd do a really quick comparison between them two as well so with these Gucci Marmont bags, there are so many different styles and sizes and colors that you can choose from. So mine is in the smallest size in the camera style. There are some really mini wallet on chain styles or very mini flap styles as well. But in terms of the camera style, this is the smallest size that you can get it in. So these Gucci Marmont bags have been so popular for a couple of years now. And you can choose from a lot of different bag styles. You can also choose from a lot of different colors and sizes. So mine is in the camera style and there are two sizes in the camera style this is the mini size and you can also get it in what they call a small size and it's slightly bigger and it's a little bit more rectangular from what I can see and this one's a little bit more of a less of a rectangular so it's a little bit less wide you can also get the mamont bags in the flat bag style so in the flap style I think they have four different sizes so they've come in the mini which is quite a comparable size to this one and they come in the small medium and also the jumbo and that one has a top handle as well so it looks a little bit different you can also get the mamont bags in the really super mini well on chain styles as well and they're really cute as well but i do find that this is probably the smallest size that i can go for and anything that's smaller i'll probably get a bit too frustrated because i won't be able to fit enough in them so going over my particular bag this is in the white color and the leather pattern here is what they call matlasse pattern and that means um yeah just this chevron stitching and the chevron stitching has been so popular in so many different design houses I see YSL doing it Chanel's been doing a lot more in the chevron style as well I do really think that the chevron style gives the bag a bit of an edgy look and then right at the front of the bag right in the middle there there is that GG logo which is the Gucci Marmont logo and the hardware of the bag is in the antique brushed gold hardware so it's not that very shiny gold and when you turn the bag around to the back the back also has the matte lace pattern and it's also got the GG logo but this time not in the hardware but this time just stitched over and the edges of the bag is all in that piping which is a separate leather and I think this piping really helps the bag to hold its shape so it goes all around the front and there is piping all around the back side as well now it is a zipper closure bag like your classic camera style bag and it's got this cute leather tassel and you can open the bag up just by unzipping and inside lining is a really nice microfiber lining and you guys know how much I love microfiber lining it is just so soft and it makes the bag feel a lot more luxe as opposed to if the bag had just a fabric lining. It's also got a little slip pocket. And I feel like these Marmon bags are definitely more trendy bags. And a lot of the times I do invest in more classic styles such as, you know, Louis Vuitton Speedies, Neverfulls, Chanel Classic Flaps and that sort of thing. But the camera bag style, I feel like will never go out of fashion. So even if the Marmon style is not as popular anymore, I feel like this bag won't look really too dated because it is a classic camera bag style. So just a little bit of a backstory on why I decided to purchased this bag about a year ago is that I was actually looking for a white bag so prior to this bag I did not have a white bag in my collection and I just really wanted a white bag so I can wear it in the spring and the summer and also I am absolutely a big fan of winter whites as well so I was looking for a white bag and initially I was very interested in the Chanel flat bag in a white color I haven't been able to find it in store so I was looking for one on the pre-loved market on websites such as fashion file the real room and that sort of thing and every time I came across one no matter how well the owner took care of the bag I saw a lot of wear and tear on the bags especially on the back side and there was always a lot of color transfer and staining 
So after a little while of searching for one, I've decided I don't want to spend that much money on a white bag because these Chanel Classic Flaps, even if you get one pre-loved, if you want a decent condition, they will be at least three, four thousand dollars and up. So I've decided against a Chanel classic flat bag. So then I was looking for an alternative white bag that I can possibly add to my collection and I started seeing a lot of these white Gucci bags on Instagram and the main blogger that really made me decide on this bag is Maria from Mia Mia Mind. She also has a YouTube channel here as well so I'll definitely link her channel down below as well. She gives me so much fashion inspiration so I do follow her on Instagram and she does actually feature this bag quite a bit on her on on her blog and Instagram and I was so inspired by all the different ways she styled this bag and so I did look it up online and found that this retail for at the time 1160 Australian dollars and this was late last year and I know that's still a lot of money for a little mini handbag but I thought for that price it is a nice premium designer bag and I thought I can definitely elevate a lot of my outfits with this bag so I decided to go for it. So that was my research and thought process on acquiring this bag. For me I feel like this is more of a casual bag but because of this nice chain detail I feel like you can definitely wear this bag dressy as well. It is a crossbody length, it's not adjustable in terms of length but it is quite a good length so later on in the video I will show you some modeling shots of me wearing crossbody and also off the shoulder as well. In terms of wear and tear, considering it's a white bag, I think it has held up quite well. So there is no visible wear or tear on the front of the bag at all. And the front piping is absolutely perfect. So you can see that. There is no loss of structure. It looks exactly the same shape as when I first bought the bag. The only spots that I can see a little bit of color transfer is along the pipings on the corners at the back there. So if you can see that, a little bit of the darkening there, and you can see a little bit on this corner as well. But for the most part, the bottom areas of the piping, they look pretty good. The actual back of the bag looks still perfect. So I do wear this bag with jeans and even black denim as well and this amount of color transfer after about a year of wear I think that's actually pretty good on a really light bag. The shoulder strap is perfect. There is no wear on the strap. The only other area that I could see a little bit of wear and tear is along these tassels. So this particular tassel, if you can see the glazing, a little bit of the glazing is missing right there and so that's the only other thing that I can see on the bag but that doesn't really bother me too much and I am not too precious with my bags anyway and considering that I was prepared to spend so much more on a Chanel flap and I decided on this bag I am pretty happy with how it's wearing and now I'll show you exactly how much I can fit in this mini bag and these are the things that I usually carry in this bag so the first thing that I put in this bag is my Louis Vuitton mini pochette and a lot of people are actually quite surprised when I said that I can fit this mini pochette in this bag but it does fit perfectly and like I always say I don't like wasting time on swapping out bags and I do like to swap out bags quite regularly so I leave all of my daily essentials in my mini pochette so when I am purchasing a bag I definitely want to know that it can fit the mini pochette. So after I put the mini pochette in there, it takes up the majority of the space in there but I can definitely fit more things in there that I normally need on a daily basis. So I also have my iPhone 7 Plus and that fits in really nicely there as well. So I'll show you like that. And usually when I'm carrying this bag, I do like to use a card holder and a coin purse rather than a proper wallet because the wallet is quite thick. So I usually use this Chanel card holder and that slips in really nicely. So if you have a look there, so it's between the mini pochette and the phone. And I do always get coffee. So I like to always have some coins with me and I usually put the coin purse on the corner as well and everything fits perfectly and the last thing I need would be the car key and for this bag I actually detach it from my six key holder and that's really easy to do anyway and then I just usually put it somewhere in the bag just like that and that's pretty much everything I need I won't even feel like downsizing because I can I can fit everything that I normally carry in there 
and it zips up perfectly. So I think that's pretty good for a mini bag and if you have a look at the back and from the side it does not look bulky at all. Oh in terms of the size I never went through the size. The bag is 18 centimeters across, it's 12 centimeters high and 6 centimeters in depth. So it is definitely a mini bag but look how much it can fit. It is such a good little bag. Now I've taken everything back out from the bag and I'm just going to show you a few different things if you are wondering whether these items can fit in there. So if you want to use a normal regular wallet in there and this is my Louis Vuitton Victorine wallet, it fits really well but I know with this wallet and my phone, because a phone is a must, it fits really comfortably but I won't be able to put my mini pochette in there. So if you want this option, instead of carrying the whole mini pochette, what you can do is I will still carry my card wallet and my coin purse. It looks like that. And instead of using the mini pochette, I am just going to take out a couple of things from the mini pochette that I, that I really need. And that will usually be a lip gloss and a hand cream and other things I really don't need all the time. So if I do it that way, they can fit really nicely like that. So I've got my hand cream and the lip gloss in there and I'll be able to fit my car key as well. So this is another option if you do like to carry your full-sized wallet with you all the time. And by getting rid of the mini pochette from this bag, you are able to fit some slim sunglasses in there as well. I do usually like to carry my sunglasses, but if I have the mini pochette in there and I can't actually fit the sunglasses, I'll just leave my sunglasses hanging on my shirt or wear it on my head. You won't be able to fit the sunglass case in there no matter how slim, but you can just pop it on top of all your items. And because this is a microfiber lining, if you lean the sunglasses right against the lining, I feel like the sunglasses won't really get scratched up, which is a really nice bonus. And usually when I like to just, you know, put sunglasses in without its casing, I usually opt for more budget sunglasses. So these are Kia Australia sunglasses that I showed you before. And these look so stylish and they fold up to be so slim and most of all, I don't have to baby it because if it scratches up or anything happens to it, I can so easily just get another pair. And one more thing about what you can fit in this bag, you definitely won't be able to fit a full sized wallet. So this is my Louis Vuitton Emily wallet. And if you have a look, it is actually exactly the same width as the bag on the outside, like that. So you just won't be able to fit that in there because it won't go past the bag opening. So. I hope that's helpful. So now onto my little mini comparison between this bag and the Soho Disco bag. The Soho Disco bag is a lot bigger and a lot wider in size and this was released a lot before the Marmont bags and this bag only comes in this one size and this size is probably more comparable to the small size in the camera bag which is the larger of the two sizes that this style comes in. So this is the mini and the small which is more similar to this size. So in terms of a quick comparison, this one is a lot more smooshier. The leather is that pebbled leather. It's a lot more casual in my opinion and it has this major tassel thing going on here. I absolutely love this but I feel like it is very hard to dress this bag up. Of course you can wear whatever bag you want with a dress but um, this in my opinion is a lot more casual bag. The other thing is the lining. Oh, and also because this is such a soft bag, I usually like to leave it stuffed with tissue paper because I have heard of so many stories where this bag has lost its structure and become kind of distorted over time from not stuffing the bag. So I always keep the stuffing in there. Whereas with my Marmont mini bag, because it is small and the leather is a lot more firm, I don't need to worry about stuffing the bag at all. So I never do that. In terms of the lining, this one has a very classic Gucci lining, which is that linen -y material. A lot of Gucci's older bags have had this lining and I think it's such a nice lining. I mean, it's not as soft and plush feeling as the microfiber lining that's on in this bag, but it is so lightweight and it does the job. So I'm still completely happy with that. And 
and it has two slip pockets so this one has a slip pocket at the back and it's also got a slip pocket which is smaller behind the front section as well and this one is actually my go-to travel bag so it is big enough it fits a lot more than you think and I think this bag is a lot more understated. I know there's a big ass Gucci logo at the front, but if people aren't familiar with the brand, they're not gonna immediately notice that. And also because it is just stitched on there rather than having a big, you know, gold sort of Gucci logo at the front, it definitely does look a lot more understated in my opinion. And when you're traveling and if you feel like you don't wanna show people that you are wearing a designer bag, you can just turn it around and you can just wear the bag this way. And it just looks like a regular tan bag. I absolutely love the color of this bag. And in terms of the shoulder strap, this one has the adjustable shoulder strap, which is really handy. So there are five different length settings. So whether you're tall or you're more petite like me, I've got it on the shortest shoulder setting there. Um, but this bag can work for all different heights. So I do love that it is adjustable. So if you are looking for a camera bag, I definitely think that Gucci is the way to go. I have checked out a lot of camera bags from different brands like, you know, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, YSL. And I really feel like for the price point, the Gucci, they do these camera bags so well. And if you are tossing up between the Soho Disco line and the Mammoth line, I think it really depends what you like and what the purpose of the bag would be. If you're going to use the bag much more casually and you want to know that you can fit a lot in the bag, I would definitely probably suggest maybe the um, Soho Disco because it will make such a good travel bag as well. And I do like the fact that it is a smooshy leather. It's just really soft to the touch. And this one has no color transfer at all considering it's a light color. And because the leather is more textured, I feel like over time it will wear better. But if you are gonna wear the bag casually, but at the same time you want a bag that you can dress up as well, I do think that the Marmon bag would be better for you because of the extra hardware on it. It's almost like little jewelry on the bag. So I definitely think that this is probably a better fit for you. And you can also consider the size up which is a small size, but for me, that size looked a little bit boxy and funny. It didn't look right on my body frame and I opted for this one, but the small size actually has adjustable shoulder straps. So it's got different holes for different height settings. So that might be something that's a major pro for you. So I'll show you some modeling shots of me wearing the bag. For reference, like I said before, I am 164 centimeters tall and I think that's five foot four. And I usually like wearing this bag crossbody. The strap drop is perfect for me as a crossbody bag and it's not adjustable. So this hits me perfectly crossbody. And you can also wear the bag just on one shoulder on the side, just like this. And I do feel that the bag is a little bit low for me to wear it this way. My hip bones are up here and it's probably quite a good few inches lower than my hip bones. So it is a little bit lower, but it still looks okay. So that's pretty much it from me for today. If you do have a favorite camera bag, I'd love to know which one your favorite is. So please leave them in the comments below because that's really why I started this YouTube channel. I don't just go out and buy these luxury goods. I really do think about these purchases. And when I do want to research an item, I always really appreciate other people's opinion on them. And I really feel like everyone's got a different collection and everyone uses their things differently. And I really hope that my input can help you out. These are a big investment financially and emotionally because for the majority of us, we do work really hard for our money and we do like to spend it sometimes on these things that make us happy, whether that be traveling or, you know, um, going to events or, you know, buying some some luxury items and that's all good and well but when we do want to spend our hard-earned money on these things we want to know that we are making the right decisions so i really hope that i can add to the pool of information out there and for that reason if one person found my video helpful in their decision making i'll be so happy with that so thank you so much for watching this video and if you stuck with me till now thank you so much for giving me your precious few minutes in your day and i can't wait to see you again soon bye guys